Hi, everybody. Happy, happy new year. It's Dr. Lori, the, the PhD antiques appraiser. I'm sorry I'm late, but I was so busy with TV and other things today. But we're going to get right to the stuff on the table because I want you to know what you should look for, what's valuable for, of course, the new year. So one of the big valuable objects that you're going to see, of course, are the bar collectibles. Oh my gosh, the millennial collectors are all collecting bar collectibles. If you're not take, getting these at the thrift store and reselling them, you are losing out big. So I want you to look for these particular pieces. This one, of course, has some great decoration on it. It actually tells you, again, the way in which you could make certain drinks. I'm not a very good bartender. You know, I'm good with sort of the the one-to-one -one drinks. You know, I, I used to make martinis for my dad, so I know how to make a martini, but that's about the extent of it. But this particular piece, of course, American-made, uh, middle part of the 20th century, about 1960s, and you can look for the rounded dome top. Those are going to be pretty valuable, or the ones that are all silver plate or all stainless steel. Value on this one, about $75. Bar collectibles really high this week, right, because we're all thinking about those types of things. Mixology pieces, too. Things like, you know, these pamphlets are really popular where you can actually, again, learn how to actually make the particular drinks pretty popular too. And those are usually in the $15 range. But if you've been watching my TV shows and watching the videos, you know that I play games a lot. And as the expert appraiser is going to help you identify pieces and make money, I want you to understand that. Oh, we've got super stickers already. Oh, you're so wonderful. Thank you, Hiding in the Mirror. I appreciate it very much. And because of that, of course, our super chatters and our super sticker stickerers <laughs> get me to answer those questions. So they're going to get featured. You can see them right here getting featured. So thank you to Hiding in the Mirror. And thank you all of you for supporting the channel. Big or small, you know, as long as you're watching the channel and you're sharing it and subscribing, that's great. But I appreciate the super stickers and the super chats too. So don't forget to ask the questions. Oh, lots of people are here. Of course, Mick is here and she's been a super chatter too. And uh, lots of folks here today with me and I appreciate that. But if you're playing the games and you've been playing by yourself or you've been playing with your family, you want to play with me, we're going to play one of my games right now. So again, you probably know Dumpster, no Dumpster if you're watching the channel. And you probably know, of course, Dr. Lori's Treasure Hunt and What's It Worth and all of my many, many games. There are literally almost 100 different videos of all of the games we play. So I know all of you are, of course, playing along with the games. We're going to play right now with this piece of Pyrex. So any question you want to ask me about this piece of Pyrex, I will answer. And we're going to play the game, and you're going to try to figure out what's it worth, right? So what do you think? What do you want to know? Here it is. Here's the mark, right? You've got a nice piece. You've got one of the what would be considered the medium-sized piece casserole dishes. What do you think? So Cosmic Mirror thinks it's the 70s. What do you think? What do you want to ask? What do you want to know? What's going to be more? Oh, it's your first live one repurpose and create? Great. Glad to be with you. Glad to have you here, of course. What do you think? Is it faded? Dishwasher fade is very important. That's a very good cher sherry. That sherry, that's a very good pick. It's also important that you know about condition and damage. Do you see this? So when you're in the thrift store, when you're at the, of course, um, when you're at the flea market, when you're at the when you're at the estate sale, you want to look for those types of things. So, okay, do I have the lid? No, Aaron, don't have the lid. This is all we've got, right? What do you think? So you think it's from the 40s or the 50s, or do you think it's 40 or $50, Patricia? Which is it? So Felicia thinks it's 40 bucks. Jenna thinks it's 30 bucks. Pirates made it a lot, so it's not super expensive, you think. Well, there's a lot of it. It's called fire glass. It actually was first introduced. The idea of Pyrex came from, I guess, uh, locomotives on trains. So the idea that the windshield had to go through different weather patterns, you know, snow and heat and the kind of thing. So the same principle for that type of glass for a windshield on a on a train in the 19th century was also why we use, of course, Pyrex and how we got to Pyrex to take it from the oven to the refrigerator. And that's basically what it is. So this particular piece, what do you think? Zane's thinks it's worth $30. Primary colors are important. Posh Puka knows that primary colors are actually pretty important. So you have to make sure you're thinking about primary colors. Why in the 1950s and 1960s, those colors were part of, of course, kitchen. Okay. Did you guess? Let's see your guesses, 75, 45, 25. What do you think? There's no lid. It does have an inclusion right here, that little area of damage. What do you think? If it were Dr. Lori's treasure hunt, how much would you treasure hunt this one for? Okay, I got 35 from Holly. Value on this particular piece, 
is $60, even in this condition. Why? The yellow is important and the interior being the different color is important too. So that's good. Now, when you're going to resell it, make sure that you make these piece, these elements uh, well known to your potential buyers. Make sure you crop those photos nice and tight. And the reason for that is when you're selling on eBay or Etsy or wherever you might be selling these pieces all over and think of other places that you can sell them to, make sure those photographs are very good and tight. You all have good iPhones or Android phones, you have nice cameras, use them. So that's a good thing. So you've got those two pieces in that particular thing. And then I wanted to talk today a little bit about New Year's. Remember that when you talk about, do you like it? It doesn't really fit my head. My head's really big. So I don't really have um, a very good opportunity to wear these types of things. But anyway, what I want you to think about um, with respect to New Year's coming up and the holiday coming up, a little bit of history for you about it. First of all, in a lot of cultures, they actually will eat round food on New Year's. And the reason for that is round food uh, has the same shape as coinage, right? Or money. So they want to eat round food in many places throughout Asia. The other thing that's significant with respect to, of course, New Year's is, of course, this kind of thing. These are, of course, matches and matchbooks. Matches and fire are important because it relates to cleansing at New Year's. That's why we do fireworks. So somebody said they wanted to see, they wanted to see the gold elephants. Well, elephants are also part of a New Year's tradition in many cultures because, of course, of the idea of the trunk being upward. And Joey Baseball wanted to see the gold elephants. These are brass. They are not a bookend. Many of you would think it's a bookend, but it's actually, I, it's actually, of course, brass. And that particular one, I'm going to put it right there for you, Joey. <laughs> it has the trunk glowing up. And the reason why the trunk is up, of course, is for good luck. And that one is brass. It dates to the 1970s and value on one is about $65. Brass really went up and down. It's kind of going down now. It's not as valuable as it once was. And here's another one, also brass. This one's from the 1980s, a little bit younger, a little bit more um, organic or what we would call biomorphic forms on this one. And um, this one in my hand is worth about $40. So what you're looking at here are that idea of good luck charms or good luck symbols. And Mick, of course, is, is supporting us today. Mick, of course, um, earthquake glass with the Murano sticker on the side. So earthquake glass statue with the Murano sticker on the side, I have to see a picture of it, but typically that range of value is going to be anywhere between $75 and $95. Thank you very much, Mick, for being a super, a super chatter. And um, we also have another super chatter there that might be Carl, but I can't really see. Yeah, it's Carl, the lazy reseller. Carl says he's lazy, but I don't think Carl's lazy. Thank you again for starting the whole super chat thing for us. And yes, of course, super stickers and super chats will help us. Do you have a question for me, Carl? I don't know. Carl, Carl's typing. Carl, da, 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 he's typing. Okay, well, while Carl's typing, I'll talk to you about another uh, specific element here. One of the things with respect to with respect to uh, the New Year's is actually what kind of food can you eat? So many of us in the United States actually eat pork and sauerkraut or some kind of pork or pig because pigs relate to prosperity. So you actually will see that kind of thing. This particular piece here is a rooster. Oh, oh Keith has a Murano rooster. This particular piece is an Anarco rooster. And this particular one is from, of course, the 1960s, those nice harvest colors. Why do I show you this? Hens and roosters and chickens are not to be eaten on New Year's because those animals have the ability to move backwards. And we want to always move forwards into the new year. And that's an interesting point, too. If you want to know the value of this, it's in our community tab. And my community tab is having is the place where you need to go. You need to be there on the community tab to get all the information, including the value for this particular piece, because a lot of you have that. And here's what the community tab looks like. If you can't find it, it's right there at the top next to the playlists, right? The community tab will give you all that information about if there's going to be a live, of course, um, stream, if there's going to be uh, an event that's going to give you free appraisals, if there's going to be, you know, value of a particular object that you want to know, we're putting it in the community tab. So you have an easy way to find all the stuff that you need. So that anarcho piece is going to be in the community tab. So click on it and don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to share. So a couple of other things about, of course, the New Year's. Yeah, poker chip holders are in fact collectible. I'm still waiting for Carl's question. Where are you, Carl? <laughs> anyway, poker chips, this one's from the 1960s. And these, which would have, of course, the playing cards in it and also, of course, the chips. Don't forget the chips can be very valuable. Different types of chips, ivory chips, celluloid chips, 
uh, Bakelite chips. Uh, these particular ones are inexpensive plastic chips, but yeah, lots of those as well. And if you haven't seen me talk about, of course, games and toys, including poker pieces, I want you to go to the binge link. The binge link is going to give you where you can binge all the videos because there's so much information. It's the information from all my videos, from my TV appearances. You know, I was late because I was doing, of course, a radio interview. And thanks for yesterday. A lot of you called into the radio interview that I had yesterday. And of course, for the TV shows too. But the binge link is really where it's at. The community tab and the binge link. And the binge link is in the description. So don't forget about that. Yeah. So you're waiting for the price on that chicken. It's in the community tab, Helen. It's easy to find. If you were at the casino, and I'll tell you a little bit about my travels, because a lot of you have been asking about my travels, but a couple of places where I usually am at New Year's, not this year, but at most years, I'm away at the holidays. And um, I really do enjoy that particular um, idea. This particular, somebody asked about the tie. The tie is a Hardy Ames here from London. This particular tie, which dates to, of course, the 1990s. And these ties here, this one is a Pierre Cardin at the back. I put out some old ties because, you know, a lot of times you're going to tie one on. <laughs> anyway, so what you're looking at there is that. And I want you to look for this because vintage clothing, really desirable. That particular tie will retail today on the vintage market about $28. Having said that, a couple of things. Um, I will come to California. I love California. I've been there so many times. I love it and I will be back. It's not that I don't want to be there, but I'm typically at this time of the year away. So I was thinking about some of the places where I've been like the big casinos. And one of my favorite places is Monte Carlo. And I want to tell you a little bit about Monte Carlo. I remember Monte Carlo very, very um, fondly. And actually, I always buy something uh, there when I'm there. And I buy something like this. This is just a little a uh, silk scarf, actually, I think it's rayon, but anyway, from Monte Carlo. And it shows you, again, what the Costa Azur looks like, this one. And these are really collectible, too, speaking of clothes. Um, but basically, what you're looking at is this particular idea. Thank you, Mick. Mick, of course, is, well, has another question. Want to safeguard the Murano statue? Okay, so it says 3M double stick tape on bottom. I'd rather if you used a little bit of silicone. It's called museum stick. And um, silicone is a little bit better than 3N double stick tape. You can find it. Well, you can find it at, at my website. You can find it in a lot of different places. But I can help you with get the right kind of museum attached. I know you. I know it's on my website at uh, go to the specials page right at the top of drboryb.com. That's how you should safeguard if you were afraid of it moving. Be careful of that. But when I was in Monte Carlo, I have to tell you a very quick story. A lot of you asked me about my travels, and yes, I've been lucky enough to be um, asked to lecture all over the world. Uh, about my expertise in art and antiques and such. And I was in Monte Carlo and I thought I was going to die on the plane getting into Monte Carlo. I will never forget it. It was 45 minutes of turbulence in a thunderstorm trying to get into Nice, France. And yes, God love them. They did actually uh, put that plane down and land that plane, but it was very difficult. What I remember of Monte Carlo was the casino. Because after that, I was having a party. I was scared to death. I thought I was going to die, and I was having a party. I was on a ship, and you can see the beautiful images, of course, of Monte Carlo as you come in. It's a gorgeous sail in, if you've ever been to Monte Carlo. Of course, Monaco. And Monte Carlo, you can see, again, the idea of you coming into that beautiful port city, that gorgeous port of Monte Carlo with all of the big yachts of all of the folks who have too much money than they should. <laughs> But wonderful, gorgeous place. And Monte Carlo, of course, um, is where one of my first uh, casino experiences actually happened. So the casino is beautiful on the top of Monte Carlo. And the casino, of course, is very, very famous in Monte Carlo. And it is an early 20th century example, late 19th, early 20th century example of architecture, too. So it's a gorgeous place. It's a gorgeous place. And I really enjoyed being there. And a lot of casino collectibles and a lot of what the traditions of, of course, Monte Carlo is, was, of course, right there. So that's wonderful. So Cosmic Mirror is here. And Princess Grace, yes, I actually saw Princess Grace's um, tomb. She's in, actually, the cathedral is right there on the top of the hill in Monte Carlo. And uh, Monte Carlo has, of course, her tomb right there. So Brandon, don't ever leave us. I hope you will live forever. Well, I hope I live forever too, Brandon. I mean, gosh, am I going somewhere and you don't know it? Let's hope not. Let's knock on some wood. I, I love you very much and I'm appreciative of all of you. 
San Francisco, I will come to San Francisco, get some short rib tacos. Well, if I eat short rib tacos, Aaron, then Brandon's worried I'm not going to be here. So, you know, I got to go cool in on the short rib tacos, but they sound good. Yes, don't forget to share. I appreciate you sharing. Um, uh, Idlewide, California is a perfect place for me to visit. So Shauna thinks that it's perfect. I think it's perfect too. All those art, all those art colonies are, of course, perfect for me too. Oh, barbecue pork. Well, eat some pork, uh, of course, on New Year's because, of course, that relates to prosperity. A couple of other things on the table. We all know about the wishes, of course, in places like South America. They make wishes with grapes, 12 grapes. They make a wish for each month. Um, and yes, the old poker chips are pretty valuable. Another tradition that we have, of course, is, again, soap or cleaning. A lot of cultures will actually clean during that time. Barbara is a super sticker. Barbara, do you have a question for me? Thank you for your super sticker. I appreciate it. I hope you're making money. A lot of you on my video calls have been telling me that you're doing very, very well, particularly in the last couple of months with help, of course, from my videos. I'm so glad you're learning. I'm so glad you're getting it. And I'm so glad you're, I'm helping you to identify and spot those valuables. Lori, Lori also is a super sticker and a big one too. So thank you very much, Lori. I hope that all these videos are helping you learn some information. It's wonderful of you to support me and support the channel with the super stickers. And that's where the super stickers go. They actually go to supporting the channel and making sure that I can do more videos and more of these live chats because a lot of you have been asking about live chats. And thank you very much to Lori Disney and others. JP wants to try traveling alone. JP, yeah, JP, travel, travel. Don't worry about alone. You'll make friends. You'll meet people. I'm sure of it. You know, you'll meet people, you'll make friends, you just start up a conversation and go from there, you know, because it really is um, a great way for you to, in fact, see the world. And, and it's important for you to see it and learn other cultures. Some places you'll like, some places you may not, but basically that's what you're looking at. Charnel, your son is a vegan chef in Austin. That's interesting to me. Huh. I eat a lot of vegetables. It doesn't look like it, but I really do eat a lot of vegetables. And it's interesting to me because I like Austin a lot. And um, I think vegan is kind of hard to make it tasty, but I bet Charnel that your son knows how to do it. Yeah. Thank you. Repurpose and create. It's nice to see you. Of course, we had a, a lot of information. Is antique, vintage and antique coral jewelry valuable? Yes. Coral, as I've told you many, many times, that coral is in fact um, desirable and it relates to, of course, good health, speaking of vegan. Um, but basically, yes, that's what you're seeing as well. Mick, um, so yes, it can be valuable whether it's costume or whether it's real. The real stuff, of course, can be a little bit more valuable. Thank you. We'll go to the store in Monaco. You were lucky enough to buy a dress from Princess Caroline's Dress Designer. Oh, wow, Mick, that's fun. So it's fun to buy a dress from Princess Caroline's Dress Designer. That must be some dress. We'll have to see it someday. And thank you for all of your super stickers and super chats. It helps the, the, the video. So when you're doing that, you're actually helping everybody. When you're saying, hey, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to, support the channel with a super sticker or super chat. That's what's, that's what's really important to help everybody. And our super chatters and our super stickers are always, are always featured. So that's great. You have a sticker, you have a poker chip box with an S and H green stamp sticker on it. I remember S and H green stamp. My aunt Chris and my mother used to sit at the kitchen table with the S and H green stamp book. And I'd look in the book and I'm like, I don't like any of this stuff. <laughs> I remember I never wanted anything out of that, that s and green stamp book. But I liked the stamps. It was kind of fun to put the stamps together. So my aunt and then my mom and her sisters used to do that. It was fun. Anyway, Chef Jetty, he's a great cook, Charnel. And he realizes that with no meat, it can still be good. Zanes, they don't really feel, they don't have nervous systems and not necessarily humane because it doesn't kill them. What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know. The Texas cherry picker is here. And thank you very much. It's nice to see you, my friends in Texas. You got to like it. And um, I'm thinking that there might be a little boy involved there. There's a little baby with a Texas cherry picker. And Brandon, Brandon always has something nice to say. And he gave me a super sticker. Brandon, I do love you. Thank you so much. You know, Brandon always has a good comment for me and something great to say on, this, on the channel. And I hope I'm helping you. I hope that I'm helping you and everybody, Brandon. But thank you so much for doing that. I appreciate it. Questions from you guys? We love Dr. Lori hiding in the mirror says we're here to help and carry on to the next year. Hiding in the mirror. I appreciate that. I really do. Because it is, it's a lot of time. It's a lot of effort, but I love to do it. And I, I really love all of you. And I want you to succeed because this can be done. The stuff is out there. I've been showing it to you in the real bargains. Do you like the real bargains? 
I hope you're learning from it. And I want you to look for quality and be able to identify it. I want you to learn it here the way I have it. I look at it and I know that's what I want you to do. I want you empowered. I'm not like these other people who are just saying, I found this and look at how this is. You're doing that and you're good at that. I want you to watch here because you're going to learn more watching here. So think about that as well. Oh, I love you too. I'm glad you're helping me into next year and I appreciate it. Yolanda, Yolanda, of course, my friend Yolanda. And I know that we've been together. We've been talking. I was talking to Yolanda just this morning on our priority going back and forth. Yolanda, thank you for your support. We appreciate it. I appreciate it very much. Do you have questions for me? A super sticker from Yolanda. You know, all of these folks are helping everybody. Brandon and Hiding in the Mirror, Barbara and Yolanda. You guys are helping. You guys are helping the whole channel. So the rest of you really have to remember that. I have a jade 14 karat pendant with stones in the middle with the shape of a flower. Well, Jay, that's great. I love jewelry. Uh, Lynn Ann is, is sending in some love, of course, from Great Britain. Thank you so much for that. And I'm appreciative and I'm happy to share. Thank you very much. And I'm happy to answer those questions too. Um, does old Nickelodeon toys have any worth? Yeah, Joey, you know what? They do have some worth. They do have some worth. But Lynn and, of course, the rest of our super sticker and super sharers are really uh, the folks who I want to appreciate, of course, today. A couple of other things that I want you to think about when it comes to um, old toys. Uh, a lot of times during the new year, a new toy would be introduced into families in places um, like Australia and New Zealand um, because that idea of game and play and fun is important too. What else might trend this year? Jennifer wants to know. What should we list this year? Oh, that's a good question. A couple of things that I'm going to see trending this year. Art Deco is going to remain strong. And of course, other pieces, which will also be featured on the channel, but other pieces like American Brilliant Cut Crystal. People are saying, oh, no, Dr. Lori, it was low for so long. It's going to start climbing. So watch it climb. That's going to happen too. Barbara, brand Lancaster brand conductor's hat and a very vintage Samsonite alligator train carry on luggage values. Yeah, very good. You know, luggage. And I talked in one of my videos recently about, of course, carry on bags, leather bags, not only Louis Vuitton and those things, you know, those are going to be valuable, but the brand conductor bags are going to also be pretty valuable too. So thanks for that great question. The Samsonite alligator train carry on bag can be as low as 75 and as high as maybe 125. It's going to depend on type and condition. Eddie, thank you so much for a super sticker. I appreciate that so much. Barbara too, and of course, Lynn and Brandon's there with a the big one, but I appreciate that, Eddie. I hope that I've been helping you. And I know that when I see the super stickers, you guys are thinking, you know what? She helped me make money and I wanna help her to support the channel because I wanna show you all the information. I wanna give you all this education. Forget all the money that I spent at Michigan and Penn State and Wesleyan and all the other schools at the Yale Art Gallery and all over the world you know, lecturing at the U, at the Louvre and the Hermitage, the Uffizi in Florence and all over the world with the travel industry who invited me, of course, to be their lecturer for years and years. I want to share it with you. I want you to get it. I want you to learn it. The stuff is out there and wonderful. You have a Philly fanatic from the 1970s. Well, Lisa may be watching me every Tuesday on Philadelphia TV, um, of course, in the, the fifth largest market in the country where I appear every week. And I have a Philly fanatic from the 70s. He does have some value. Depends on how big he is. And the fact that the Philly fanatic has changed over the years also increases value. A lot of people are looking for those vintage ones like the ones from the 70s. So I'd have to see yours. You can go to the website and send me a picture and I'll give you a value for those. Malachi chest set worth anything? Sharon, that's a good question. That's a good question. So Malachite, of course, is still desirable. A lot of those chest sets and now with Queen's Gambit on, Oh boy, you could see chess going way, way up and it's going to stay up as long as that particular um, series remains popular and it's got a lot of seasons to go. It's kind of like the crown. You saw all the royal stuff go up as a relation to, in relation to the crown. Wait a minute, my friend Eddie had a question. My partner and I just discovered you on YouTube. We really appreciate you and you like your style. Well, mwah, to you and your partner, happy new year. I like your style too, and thank you so much. I'm glad you found me. You gotta share me with other people. A lot of people are like, Dr. Laura, you're my best kept secret. I can't be a secret. If I'm a secret, then I'm not gonna be able to keep it up. So, oh, Posh Puka, you're so fabulous. Thank you so much. My friends on the West Coast are coming in strong. My friends on the West Coast are coming in strong. And she has a great little posse that she, of course, is with out there in Nevada. 
So thanks so much. Would a Nefertiti bus signed crowned West Germany have any value to it? Okay, right there. It's signed Western Germany. How old is it? Oh, you're all looking around like, oh my gosh, Dr. Lori, I don't know. Remember, these types of things where you know the history, where I'm teaching you the history, if it says Western Germany, it has to be after World War II. So now you've got a date for it. Now you're not going back and saying, is it 19th century? Is it 1920s? Is it this? Learn these kinds of tricks. That's what I'm trying to teach you. Other people are teaching you that stuff. Other people are doing are showing you images of what you're doing going to a thrift store. So learn it right here with the expert. I'm here to help you. Um, let's see. Um, I've got my mom in Philly reading your articles. And there's, oh, yeah, newspaper articles for a million years. Yeah, of course. So any other questions? Posh Puka. I've got my mom in Philly reading. Yeah, I'm so glad. You know, I started out, of course, in, in the Philly area and then New York and California. And then the TV people picked me up. And of course, everyone said, oh, Dr. Lori, I need you here. And you, you know my whole story. You can read more about me, of course, at drlorivee.com. And there's a, a link at the top that says, who's Dr. Lori? You can read more about my background, which is uh, extensive. So anyway, what else have we got? What's the best way to identify a sterling silver mark? The easiest sterling silver marks are 925, 925 parts per thousand. And then of course the word sterling, those are the easy ones. But other ones that have high content of sterling depends on where it was made. For example, 835 is what's used in Scandinavia for sterling. So that's a different number from 925, right? So 935 is going to be different. I said 835, I meant 925. 935, 935, geez, three times the mistakes. So that's what you're looking at. But yes, um, yeah, Posh is right. I can appraise everything. Lori Disney's saying, Posh says she can appraise everything. You know it. Helen, thank you so much for your super sticker. Do you have a question for me, Helen? What's your question? Let's see. Oh, here's Posh's question. Is there a difference in value between uranium and Vaseline glass? Okay, we use that term Vaseline glass for uranium glass. So some people like the term Vaseline glass and some people like uranium glass, right? They like to use that term interchangeably. Okay, so that's what you're looking at. In terms of value, it has to do with how it will fluoresce and you all like black lights and you all know about black lights. And basically you have to think about how it will fluoresce. So if it really, really fluoresces, then it, that depends on, of course, the amount. So what I'm looking for in terms of value are big pieces and pieces that really do fluoresce. And when you're trying to sell those or resell those, make sure you take a good picture of them fluorescing and explain to whoever your potential buyer is that you've got that particular piece. Okay, so I've got two more super stickers in the top. Do you have questions for me, super sticker people? Helen? I still couldn't find a price for the chicken. For this chicken? I told you, it's on the community tab. It'll be on the community tab and it will appear there 12 o'clock. So go look for it. So let's see, uh, where are you? There's the community tab, can you see it? So click on it and it will appear. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, do you appraise coins also, Diana wants to know. Yes, I can appraise coins. Remember, coins are more valuable if they're not circulated. So if they haven't been traded for candy bars, I always say trade a coin for a candy bar, but if they haven't been traded for candy bars. And I want to thank all of you also for our events. Um, you know that I'm doing, of course, a Zoom event live, and uh, those were through Wilkes University, and we, have, we are selling them out. So thank you for selling out, of course, those events. Go to the events page. There's only a few, a few seats left to the second of the sold out events. The second one has a couple of, um, of seats left. We opened a couple more. Let's see. Yeah, it is cool. Let's see. Have you heard of E.E. E. Wilkerson artist? Linda wants to know. Yes, I have. Have you? <laughs> so you're like, okay, Dr. Lori. Got to see a picture of the piece. You can send it to my website and it will say find values and then it'll say send a photo. Um, let's see. Jeremy, how are you, Jeremy? So no, qu no questions from the, from the super sticker folks, right? Okay. Find storage In finding storage units, what would I look for? Um, well, what I would look for in storage units is fine art, furniture, and any boxes of anything. Because in a storage unit, if there's a box, guess what? There's something in that box. So I always look for storage units like that. Oftentimes, people will like to look for safes in storage units. You know, I think there are fewer people who are keeping really valuable stuff in safes and storage units. But a lot of people do look for a safe. If there's a safe in a storage unit, most people bid on it. I always think boxes are the way, and I don't mean big cardboard boxes that you're going to put like pillows in. I'm talking about small scale boxes, right? And the other things that I would always look for is you want to look for, of course, good materials, right? 
the other thing I like to look for with respect to storage units that I've been teaching people for years and years and years when they ask me, what's it worth, Dr. Lori? Um, blankets. Because if somebody cared enough to go get a blanket to wrap something, it's probably worth something. So think about that too. Uh, what else have we got? You're picking up a Rembrandt today. You wish it was the original. Well, I wish it was the original too, Posh. But you know, uh, Rembrandt's even restrikes from the 19th century can have value. They won't have as much value as the original, but Rembrandt restrikes. How do you tell? You've got to look at the paper and I want you to look at those papers. I tell you about Rembrandt's and I tell you about prints on my real bargain videos and also on some of my print videos. I talk a lot about paper and process. And if you're looking to binge my videos, guess where the binge link is? It's in the description. It's easy to find the binge link right in the description. So anyway, um, dust is a clue in storage units. Yeah, if it's been there a long time, usually. Oh, you have a ticket for the Zoom event. Excellent, Patricia, thank you so much. Yeah, Mick's gonna be there and I think Lori's gonna be there. Is that thread you have in the silver dish? Is the thread you have in the silver dish? What are you talking about, Carl? Are you talking about these? These actually go on the top and these are the pourers for, of course, the drinks. What are you talking about? The thread in the dish. What are you talking about? Carl, write to me. Are there any, are pieces marked Occupy Japan worth more? Well, Occupy Japan pieces, you know, do have value, but if you have just little, those little trinkets, like little, little figurines that they made in Occupy Japan, those are like under $15. The big ones are even like $15. The little ones aren't really worth that much. I bought a piece of Murano yesterday, but it's super pale yellow color, clear and not very valuable. Well, Charnel, you better show me before you go deciding it's not very valuable. I was just talking to a TV anchor in one of the major markets in the United States after our TV hit. And she said, oh, I forgot to show you those figurines. I was going to just throw it away. I'm like, well, you got me here. You got to use me, right? Um, the stoppers look like spread throughs. Oh, these look like, like spools. Here, I'll hold it up for you. This particular piece, see the cork here? And then the, t the bottom goes, of course, into the into the bottle and then you pour it, right? It's all about drinking this week, right? Isn't it all about drinking? Hey, I went to the University of Michigan. It was all about drinking, let me tell you. Okay, what else have we got there? You had any luck finding clocks at thrift stores? So Zane's looking for clocks and he's here to try to get you guys to help him look for clocks. So there's lots of clocks. I've got lots of clocks here on my set. You'll notice that they're all set to 12 here. Um, the New Haven Clock Shop clock. We've got uh, another one here that's mid-century modern, but you know about clocks. Do you know anything about the painters who signed art as Roland 1888? Well, you know, there are a lot of people who will sign pieces all different ways. And yes, as the PhD Antiques Appraiser has written 30 books on, of course, art antiques and collectibles, I know a lot about forged signatures. I oftentimes have told you, you know, I've seen 18th century landscape paintings signed with Sharpie magic markers. So be careful of forgeries. Be careful of those. Um, Christine says her husband has a toy car from the Indy 500, 1947, he was there. Uh, he was there when a driver crashed and died. Oh gosh, that's terrible. But in fact, uh, toy cars that relate to NASCAR are high and to Indy, of course, are high. So of course, you're going to see that. Indy specific to, of course, that particular place. I was, I was there at Indy, you know, and it's amazing when you're standing there because it really, ex it looks so big. And then when you're standing there on the track, you're kind of like, wow. I was in Talladega too. Talladega was a cool place. That was a lot of fun. You didn't think I went to Talladega, did you? Yeah, I like NASCAR. All right. I have a lamp that was your great grandmother's and the wrought iron black roses and snakes. So that sounds like if it's wrought iron with roses and snakes, that sounds like it's a more of a Gothic revival piece. Uh, late 19th, early 20th century in wrought iron. Very, very desirable, collectible, can be very valuable into the, you know, 800 to 1200 or more thousands of dollars. Cosmic mirror. Oh, Dr. Lori, Mick is saying I'm looking fabulous. I didn't lose any weight. I was trying to lose 10 pounds before ho the Christmas holiday and I blew that. I couldn't do it. And now I am back on it. I am back on it because I got to get rid of this. This has to go. <laughs> okay. Anyway, let's see. Where are we? Uh... Well, I missed it. Is vintage Galway crystal worth much? Lorelai wants to know. You know, when I think of Lorelai, I think of Gilmore Girls. Do you, does everybody say, oh, Gilmore Girls? I don't know if you watch that. Um, that was like so old and so much fun. So Galway crystal can be worth something. Again, if you are looking at crystal from some of the mainstay places, mostly Great Britain or the United Kingdom, if you will, 
then yes, you're going to see that. Yes, we've done Dr. Lori cruises and they are a blast. I take you through the museums and of course we go all over. Yeah, the cruises are a lot of fun. All of my travel is a lot of fun. And I'll talk more about travel as they did about Monte Carlo because the travel industry likes me to go with their guests. You know, they want to make sure that there is an expert there to tell you about these places. And I've had the good fortune to travel the world and to be in the world's great museums. I did cry in the Hermitage. I was very excited to be there. Stephanie, thank you, Stephanie. Stephanie just gave us, uh, all of us, you and, and all of us, of course, support of the channel. You have a couple of prints that say Picasso from the Medina Picasso collection. Okay. Are they more valuable distributed by his daughter? The fact that they relate to the family does make them valuable. But again, any of the Picasso pieces, if they actually are um, authentic, which yours are from that collection, are going to be valuable. But yes, indeed, that's what you're seeing. You're seeing those particular types of pieces. Oh, they're telling me I'm 10 minutes over. Should I keep going? Should we keep talking? All right, let's keep going. One more question. One more question. Let's see. You want to cruise? Yes, you can. You have a vintage hula girl with a flower in her hair and a medallion. Do you know anything about those? Yes. Those are very, very popular in the early uh, years of the 1950s all the way through, of course, the 1970s. And then there are some, the very rare ones, which come out, of course, um, Hawaii, those that come from the early 1900s, around 1910, 1918. So yeah, those are pretty fabulous. But yeah, um, I'm not a very good hula dancer, but I would in fact um, enjoy seeing that too. So hiding in the mirror, thank you very much. And of course, all of our super our super chats. So yeah, the Medina collection pieces um, from Picasso, uh, what you could do is you could send me a photo so I can take a look at it through our website. That's the best idea. So I can get you a specific value. But yes, anytime that you keep any object within a family or a relationship of the artist, whether it's you know spouse or, or children or whatever it might be, the value is going to rise because you can more easily identify and authenticate the provenance or the legacy of the piece. So if you find a piece, one of the things I always remember telling people, you know, they find, oh, we found somebody's uh, hope chest, you know, found somebody's blanket chest with a name and initials and a wedding date on it. How do I find the person? If you find the person related to the family, it's going to be worth more. So these are the types of selling tips I want you to get too when you're when you're here at this channel. Okay, um, that was great. I enjoyed your company. All the best. Okay, Dolly, we'll see you next time. Um, repurpose and create. Happy New Year and health to everybody. You have an iron angle candle holder. Is it an iron angel candle holder? So is it is it basically like this, 13 inches tall? We'll have to see. Um, let's see. Lockdown gave Carl an opportunity to list all of his stuff. Well, lockdown does that, right? So you were able to do pretty well with your selling and sort of move all that stuff into the listing category as opposed to only just getting inventory. So, you know, sometimes the world works the way the world's supposed to work. So bye-bye, Cher from Chicago. I'm happy to share all of the information. I hope you guys learned some more about New Year's customs here. Don't forget to <laughs> ring the bell. Loud noises, right, is also a New Year's custom. And ringing the bell here is, of course, subscribing. I hope you'll subscribe and, of course, share the channel. But a New Year's custom of ringing the bell or making noise would keep evil spirits away for the new year. So I wish you all a happy new year. I'm Dr. Lori. Thank you so much for your support. I'm grateful to you. Happy new year. Stay right here. Those of you who are looking for our live streams at night, we are entertaining that. We are going to look into doing that. We'll do more live streams because you seem to like them, right? So if you seem to like them, I'll answer those questions. We'll go from there. Yeah, no gunshots, please. So take care, everyone. And we hope that you have a wonderful new year. Thanks so much. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to watch the channel. The binge link is in the description. I'm Dr. Lori, the expert PhD antiques appraiser. I love you and I wish you a happy, happy new year. Bye-bye. See you next time.